Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. So I had to turn the filter back onto the humidity table. If you remember from last week, I had gone ahead and turned it back so it was flowing into the pond, looked really pretty, and it was more quiet. That ended up not working out. What happened is I came outside the next day, so the day the vlog went up, I stopped filming on Friday, vlog went up on Saturday, came out here Saturday morning, and it looked like somebody had dumped a gallon of milk in here. The water was white. It was translucent, but white. Now, when it comes to fish, that can mean really just a couple of things. I had to sort out what the different possibilities were. What I was most concerned about was that there was a change in bacteria, that there was an ammonia spike, but that didn't seem likely since this is an established and like well-functioning system. It's been running for a long time, but normally I don't have to worry about ammonia spikes unless I were to do like a 75% water change and like change out all the biological media. Like uh, there are a lot of things that would have to happen. I'll explain ammonia and all of those things in a moment, just for those who don't know what I'm talking about. So uh, that white appearance, that cloudiness that you'll see in the water, the same thing happens with fish tanks uh, when you set them up. And uh, that is suspended bacteria. It's bacteria, digestive bacteria, that would normally be attached to surfaces like rocks or biological media that's in the filter. When water passes through it, that bacteria digests that ammonia and nitrite that's within your water. So I was like, all right, this is probably ammonia. So the first thing I did, which you would think would be to test your ammonia, no, I tested my pH. Because when ammonia goes up really high, pH crashes really, really low. And while I do have a pH pen, I went ahead and I just did the quick dips, these little strips, you dunk them in the water, wait a few seconds, pull them out and then you match them up with the colors on the back to see what's going on. The pH was down into the fives. Very, very, very acidic. I mean, it was bright yellow. And that told me, okay, this has to be an ammonia issue. So I then went out to the store to buy a new ammonia test kit. That's why I used the strips because my ammonia test kit was several years old. I used it and it just, it wasn't really giving me good results. So I went out, got a new test kit. And here is the result of that test kit. So you can see here, this is actually a day or so old. It was a little bit darker than this, and it was it was almost off the chart. Which then had me thinking, okay, what the heck happened here? Why did my ammonia spike? And I immediately need to do something to detoxify that ammonia. Which I actually did initially when I saw the whiteness in the water, just to be safe. I used this neutral regulator, which is out of focus. And I do prefer my pH to be a little bit below 7. I just like the stuff. I can buy a big bottle of it off Amazon for like 30 bucks. It lasts me just about a year. And it removes your chlorine, chloramines, and detoxifies ammonia while adjusting your pH to a neutral seven, which is important. So like I said, I prefer for it to be a little bit lower than that, but my water is so hard and alkaline. I generally am like, if I can get it to seven, I'm cool with that. And this product does keep it very stable. I could just use some type of soda, some type of acid and do it myself but I like that it has these other benefits and it's stable. So it's not that much money just to have that peace of mind. So I put that in there just to be safe. Also grabbed a bottle of Prime Laws at the pet store because this stuff is really, really, really good for detoxifying ammonia. I wasn't certain if the problem was going to be ammonia, but with a pH that low and the water being cloudy, that it just, that had to be what the case was. So now a couple of days have passed. Not, I don't even think a full 48 hours has passed because I didn't, figure out what the problem was until very late Saturday evening, almost into early Sunday morning, like close to midnight. And I'll talk about that in a minute. First, I think we should go ahead and test the water again, and it takes five minutes. So I'm gonna get started on that right now. It's very, very simple. You just fill this up to the line, want your meniscus to be just below that. And I mean, I highly doubt I'll be able to do this in this manner. Here we go. So I get that right up to where the meniscus, that's where the indention is, is right on that line. I add my chemicals. And it's really quite simple. There's bottle one and bottle two, and you just do eight drops from each. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And take your cap, put it back on there, shake vigorously for five seconds, and then wait five minutes. Ideally, I want this to be yellow. I want to see zero. I will be shocked if that happens. And so right, in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and get my test strip in here, get it wet for a couple seconds, pull that out. I'm mostly just comparing pH here, which is the third one up, and that's fresh water. I want it to be uh, kind of in this range right here. 
which I feel like it's still kind of more on the acidic side, uh, but it's getting more orange to it. This was bright, vibrant yellow before. The top where the pink is, the nitrate, I mean, that's just going to be there. It's an aquaponics tub. I want there to be some nitrate. So I'm gonna come back in five minutes. I can already see the color changing here and uh, talk more about what happened. So while that is developing and waiting for it to go ahead and give me the results, I'm gonna talk about all the different hypotheses I had for what happened here. And I know you may be wondering, hey, this is a plant channel, but this does tie back to the plants because I can't water my plants with water that has high levels of ammonia and really, really low pH, acidic water. Now, I can water a lot of them, but my Nepenthes, no. My Vandas, pretty much all of my orchids, no. Everything else, probably okay. And that's why I thought, go ahead and talk about this a little. And it's going to explain some stuff that might end up being confusing in the vlog this weekend. So first, I should explain the nitrogen cycle, and I'm going to do it very, very quickly. Your fish, they eat. And what they eat, they excrete, and that comes out as ammonia. Leftover food also gets broken down into ammonia. This happens through bacteria and things like that in the water, kind of like how we have certain things in our gut that helps us digest. It's the same thing with this aquatic ecosystem. There's bacteria that convert that ammonia. They basically process it into nitrites. Nitrites are very toxic, just like ammonia. They're bad for the fish and not going to be great for the plants either. But there's another set of bacteria that breaks that nitrite down into nitrate. Nitrate the plants will eat on. You don't want it to be super high, but having a tank or a pond without nitrate is very difficult to do. You want the levels to be as close to zero as possible, obviously, but getting it actually at zero, especially in something containing koi and goldfish, probably not going to happen. Unless maybe you have like one fish and a ton of plants because those will help consume some of the nitrate. Now, in the wild, in a natural ecosystem, in a huge body of water, this gets broken down further. Uh, ionization, all different types of things happen. It can dissipate into the atmosphere. That's not going to happen in this artificial setup. Now, there are biopellet reactors and things like that you can use to help break down your nitrate, but that's not practical for a koi pond. Maybe a reef tank, something salt water, but not not in this situation. And I want there to be some nitrate and phosphate, which the nitrate and phosphate, that all happens after the nitrites because that's what the plants feed on. It's what's in a lot of our fertilizers. So having some is okay, but I don't want it to be like over the top. So it'll burn the roots of the plants. So what I decided, what I figured must have happened here was that I turned this waterfall forward. I had it coming over the front, which is what I had it doing for a very long time, but that doesn't really matter. I brought it forward and reduced the flow of what was running across this table. Now, this table is actually covered in rocks. Rocks that are made for aquaponics. They're very, very porous. They're not supposed to affect your pH. And the idea there was that they would hold on to moisture and release it into the air and help raise the humidity in this space. However, they're porous, which means that they're also going to culture bacteria. And I'm referring to good bacteria, that bacteria that would break down the ammonia and turn it into nitrite and then into nitrate. Well, when I turned it, I left some of the flow on the table. I just reduced it by probably 60%. So uh, then in doing so, all the ammonia being produced by the fish in that like 24 hour period wasn't getting processed by this rock on the table. That's why it was suspended in the water. There was nothing in there to remove it. That's what my theory was. After I played around with everything for a while and thought on it, I was like, that has to be it. Was that this table was providing much more biological filtration than I thought. I figured it was adding some. Didn't think it was adding that much. But no, it, it's apparently like just a biological filtration machine. Which is good, though I would prefer it not being pouring over that table because it's very noisy, but... It's good for the water, so I've just learned to live with it. That's okay. And the reason I know that this is what happened is because I went ahead, turned that back, and then here we are, I guess maybe just over a day later, and the water's cleared up. So all that suspended bacteria that was in the water got some place to go. So that is good. However, the ammonia is still quite high. I'm not surprised by that. I have the chemicals in here to detoxify. Normally the fish would be up at the surface gasping for air, breathing very erratically they would look rough koi generally once you have them for a while are a pretty tough type of fish 
But still, the ammonia is up in the super, super toxic level. I mean, any ammonia is toxic, but it's way up there. So essentially, I have to treat this like a new system. This is basically a brand new system, so it should finish its new cycle faster. This is something you deal with when you set up a new pond, any type of aquatic ecosystem. You have to let it run through that nitrogen cycle that I just discussed. And then by removing it from its source of bacteria, disposal, or whatever you want to call it, I've essentially started over. But it should cycle faster, like I said before. Now that the water's cleared up, I give this probably a week, and that will get better. The pH is already coming back up, which is great. But like I said, I can't use this to water, so it's going to complicate things out here for the next probably 10 days or so, is what I'm guessing. I'm also being very mindful of the amount of food that I give to the koi. I'm not just throwing in handfuls of food two or three times a day like I was before. Now I'm giving them a little bit, waiting several minutes, which is I mean, kind of what I've always done, but I'm actually watching each fish, making sure they're getting fed and throwing the food to the different fish so that there isn't a ton of extra waste being excreted. That's really all I can do to solve this problem is wait. It's a biological process that has to kind of resolve itself, but there are things I can do to help take care of the fish. Like I was talking about these chemicals here to help detoxify that ammonia, that's what's gonna keep them going. Keeping the oxygen levels really high in the water too, very important. And water changes. Now, if this were actually a brand new fish tank or a brand new pond, I wouldn't do much of a water change for a while. I would do small ones intermittently, but nothing very large. So what I'm going to have to do instead of watering my plants like once a week and just drenching them, I'm going to be watering them in small amounts probably every other day for the next couple of weeks. And I'm going to water them with the aquaponics water, not my orchids though. And uh, then I'm after I water them, I'm going to come in with a garden hose and give them some water from the garden hose too to help flush out ammonia to help prevent burn. Though I do think they will be okay in that regard. But like I said, there are some plants that won't be, and those are the plants that I won't use this water on. So basically, I'm going to be making sure this gets a 10 to 20% water change once a week for the next several weeks. And then I can get it back to normal. And when it gets back to normal, it won't really matter because this all gets moved outside. I'm inside right now. I'm in a little bubble I've created in my garage, keeping my tropicals alive. If you're new to this channel, I forget to point that out to people. I'm indoors right now. This will all be moving outside in the next few weeks, which isn't great for the fish to have to go through multiple cycles. So I'm also outside right now, setting up their system, getting that cycled and ready to go so that I can move them out there without there being much problem. Because that's a lot of change. With fish, you really want stability. That's really important. So that's what I'm dealing with right now. This was too much to put into the vlog. It needed a whole separate video. And there's another video that'll be out in the next few weeks that kind of pertains to fish and aquaponics so this will hopefully be a good background into that yeah that's that's what happened here i messed up i shouldn't have pulled this that far away from that bed of water or i should have put in another pump to keep it going through there but you know what it is what it is the fish are okay it was a learning experience i now know that this hydroponic medium that i have in here is an excellent source of biological filtration which is good to know because I may incorporate it into my freshwater tank in the house, actually. So I learned something good here at the same time, and everything worked out okay. But if you ever have a pond or a fish tank and this sort of thing happens, the main thing to know is go ahead and detoxify that ammonia. This doesn't remove the ammonia, it just detoxifies it so that it's not going to burn the gills of your fish like the ammonia would otherwise. You don't want to use chemicals like zeolite that remove the ammonia, I need that ammonia in there to go ahead and recycle everything. So it's got to stay, but I will be doing water changes to help bring it down some, but its presence is still necessary to recycle that biological bacteria. Okay, that's enough. That's what happened here. The water's foamy. That can be caused from excess salts. It could be caused from things being messed up with the alkalinity. Things are out of balance right now. So my main thing is keeping my filter clean and being very weary and watching things closely. But don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. It helps a lot and I appreciate every single one of them. Subscribe as well, upload multiple times a week. I'll link my social media stuff down below in the roots of the video. Follow me, I'll follow you back. and We can look at each other's pictures and have fun nerdy plant time together. But all right, as always everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.